Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. In this video, we're looking at um, Wimpack software. We're going to look at how you would add the Honeywell MPA2 controller to the Wimpack software. The equipment I'm using today, I'm using the MPA2 controller. The software is the Wimpack Pro. Um, it can be Wimpack Pro or it can be the Wimpack um, Standard Edition SE or the Basic Edition XE. Uh, it's just a, so happens that Honeywell gave me the, the Pro. The readers I'm using, I'm using the Lumen Axis. I'm using them as a, as a Wiegand connection, so data one, data zero, POSNEG and what have you. The, um, the connection terminals on the MPA2 is quite unique. It uses an RJ45 connector. You can see them here. The um, reader ports, in this case, are the silver ones. So you've got um, door one and door two. Uh, door one, reader one. Door one, reader two. So reader in, reader out. And the blocks in the middle here, they're for accessories such as exit button, door contact, um, green call point uh, inputs, alarm inputs, and what have you. You can also drop wires into these connectors here. Because of the, the way these readers are connected, you need an RJ45 connector. Honeywell do supply one. You can order it separately if you're doing the accessories. Or, or you can use a normal RJ45 plug. However, I'm using one of these here. So the MPA2 is a web has a web server built in. And you need to log into it in the first instance to do some setup. Now, the static, the static IP address it comes with is 192.168.1.150. Um, I've changed mine. When, you, when you're setting the system up, you can enable DHCP. And I happen to know I had something on my network with that address. So I, I enabled DHCP. I used a generic network scanner to find my IP address. Um, and here we go. It, it gave me the address of 179. So, so you could either be on the landing page of 150 or use DHCP and, and find it manually. When you first log in, you need to use a username and password. The initial first time login is admin admin, and then it will prompt you to change the password. I've already done that, so I'm going to log in using my credentials. Okay, so all we have to do really is change the way the controller behaves. We, we don't want it to be standalone. Uh, we don't want it to work on Max4 Cloud. We want this to work on Wimpack. So at the top here, we'll go to uh, Panel Configuration, Open Loose, um, Host and Loop Communications, easy for me to say, and then change it to, to suit the application. So at the moment, it's defaulting to Cloud. And I was actually previously using this um, controller on a Cloud system, but we're going to change it to Wimpack. Save that change. OK. Uh, everything's OK there. Um, disable encryption. OK. You can see now it's changed its port to 3001. Um, that, that's the standard port to use on um, Wimpack. Save those changes. And that's the controller configured for Wimpack. If we do need to change the IP address, we can click on setting, settings here. Um, you can see I've got DHCP enabled. Change that to static anyway. You don't want to reboot it all the time. Um, and you can change the IP address to suit your um, installation. So that's the MPA2 controller configured. Let's log into the Wimpack software, and we can add this to Wimpack. OK, so with Wimpack running, we can now add the controller. So we go to Configuration. Um, device and um, device map. As you can see, we've, we haven't got any added. So let's um, right click and add an MPA gateway panel. Give it a name. Let's call it door. There's no spaces, by the way. Door MPA. Describe it if you need to. What type of controller is it? The address and what have you. Nothing changes. Um, how is it? Connected, well, it's TCP IP. Don't need to worry about that. This IP address, as if you remember, they copied it, so there's the IP address. So that's the controller um, details added. What we have to do is add that to the ADV. So at the top there, click Add, 
Okay. So that's the controller added to the ADV. Click on next. What formats are we supporting? Well, I know we're supporting 38 bit. So make sure it's enabled. It is. Uh, it's not a multi format reader, the Lumen Access. It only supports 38 bit in this case. Um, so if you wanted to untick all the others, you can do. I'm just going to leave it there. And click on next. Available time zones. If you want to do custom time zones, this is this is where you would create one. Leave it as it is for me. I want 24 hour access. Click next. Site codes. I know my site code is 14. If you don't know what your site code is yet, you'll you'll find out um, later on. Then you can come back and edit it. Um, site code is as OK. Click on next. Um, readers. Um, reader one. Um, let's add. OK. So um, door one, reader one is now added to the ADV. I've also got an exit reader on reader one and port one. So let's tick on that, add that to the ADV, click OK. And then re and reader two, I've got nothing connected yet, I so will do later, but I'm just going to add it anyway. There, added. So you can see there, um, one A, door the MPA reader one A, 1B, MPA reader 1B, so that's reader in and reader out. Might be useful for, for doing uh, an entry exit door where it's reader on both sides of the door. And reader 2 is just reader 2 only. They're all added to the ADV. Click on next. Inputs. Um, you can see the, I think there's eight inputs per door. Yeah, there's eight inputs per channel. So on channel one, which is door one, you have eight available inputs. So reader one, uh, input one would be the exit button. So I'm doing reader in, reader out, so I don't need to use that. But I might have, might have a door contact input on two. So let's add that. You can see there, it's predefined door one status. So I click OK. Um, I haven't... I'm, I'm going to use a different type of contact. I'm using micro switch. So let's change that to normally open. And then, as I said, there's eight inputs. So if we then go down to uh, input nine, input nine will be door two, input one, which should, if I click add, should come up as a door two exit button, egress button. Click OK. So there are the inputs. Next, we should come to the outputs. So the output one would be the lock output for door one. So let's add that. OK. And have we got a local alarm, which would be output two? We, we might use it. So let's add that. Auxiliary output. OK. And as before, if we scroll down, six outputs on each channel on um, outputs so output seven would now be uh, um, output one for, for relay two so if we had that for door two it should be the lock output for door two which it is and then enable the auxiliary um, output as well if you're doing door sounders or something like that and they're all added to the adv click on next no downstream devices that's all finished. Click finish. Oh, there we are. So in the device map here, you can see the doors come up. It's now added to the suite. In the um, alarm window, it's come up with a couple of alarms. First of all, it's the green saying the door is online. The poll response is normal. That's good. Um, power Primary power is down. Well, that's true because mine's PoE, and I've not put that link in. I've, I've not told it is PoE only. And the lid is open. So they're all fine. And we can act those alarms, acknowledge them. And they might reoccur later on. So that's the door added and confirmed that it's added to Wimpack. Now, now we have to do a little bit more configuration. So let's go to configuration. Um, we're going to add the C, configure access areas and we are going to configure control areas. So let's do control areas first. On the bottom, show available devices. 
what type let's say an entrance first of all and the and it shows you the readers we've just added so on this site here we're going to add these readers so I'll be, you just simply highlight it and drag highlight and drag and here we should have panel there's your mpa panel Now, when I set Winpack up, uh, and this is a test, um, I use it for testing. You can say I just call it test site. You might call yours corporate headquarters or shop one, shop two, your customer's business name. And basically what we're saying, this shows you all the available devices, inputs and outputs on that customer's particular site if you need to do some admin. So if you needed to check on inputs, where is it? Oh, that's all there is. If you want to check on inputs, you can do uh, the data one and data um, input one, exit button, and, and what have you. You can add them to there. I, I don't need to do that. So there, the, that's a control area added. Next, so let's close that. We don't need that window anymore. Or this one. So next, let's go to access areas, show available devices again. And this time, we're just going to. The, the, the list is a lot shorter. You, all you can add is the entrances. So entrance one, access area. And there we are. And now we've shown these are the access points for this particular site. And close that. And there we are. So card and access levels. And now I've already, as I, as I said, this is my demo software, so I use it all the time. I've already created two access levels, doors and test. You can add and create your own whenever you like. So let's do it now. Let's call it um, MPA. And available accounts, uh, sub accounts is default, so that's okay. All right, so that. And there's the MPA access level. So that means if I assign when I'm creating a user and I assign anybody an access level um, MPA, they will be allowed through the doors here, which are green. So MPA, I'm going to, if I wanted only to let them in reader one, door one, I could go to configure and I could set access for this entrance to green. So when I create a, a user and I assign them the access level MPA, they're only allowed through this door here. But what I'm going to do is set access for all areas. So I've just gone here, right click, configure, and set access for all the areas. So that means when I create a user and I put them down as MPA, as an access level, they're allowed through all these doors here, which are green. That's the controller now configured and added to Impact. And we can test its functionality by adding a card. Now I've got a card here. I know the site code. I actually know the card number as well. Let me double check I got the right one. Six five five zero. So now if I go to card, card holder, um oh I'm already there. in fact I bet this card's already on now, is it? So there's my name and details, cards. That's it. Oh. That's a shame. That's not a shame. It's good that it saves me typing it out again. But that's my um, my card details were already there. So that was that's the card number one zero 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 six five five zero. Um, active it's your number. And this is what I was saying before about access levels doors. If I'm make sure I'm in MPA and click OK. So that means when I come to test my card later on, or when I come to use my card. Um, as I've got MPA access levels now, that means I can get through any of those free um, readers. And there you go. That's the way to add a Honeywell Max Pro controller to the Winpack access software.